Hey guys, welcome to a live stream. Um, if you're just tuning in, let me know in the comments. Welcome if you're watching this on my channel after the live stream. So today I am doing editing tips and things. So I'm very excited. I have filmed a lot of um, like California vibes travel videos. And so I use a lot of slow-mo and a lot of things that I usually do when I edit. So I'm like, what a great opportunity. Let's do some behind the scenes. And so if you aren't subscribed and you don't um, have your notifications turn on, hit that bell right next to the subscribe button. So when I do things like this, live streams, you're informed. Yes, 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 this is so exciting. So really quickly, I'm gonna make sure everything is up and going. What's up? Tell me where you're from. Hit, smash that like button. Smash that mother, father like button. Um, so I've, I've been working on my live streaming. Oh, see, I even got a light. I've been working on my um, live streaming-ish. So hopefully you guys can see the comments in the chat. Um, so basically, if you're curious, my live streaming setup, I'm gonna do like a how to live stream video uh, in the future, but right now I'm using the software Wirecast and I have like a little LED light coming this way. I'm using this microphone, the one that I occasionally use for podcasts. It's the blue snowball mic. It's not in the description below now, but I will put it after the live stream is done. And then, yeah, I have Wirecast on one Apple monitor, and then I'm using uh, this Apple monitor's webcam to say hi to you guys. Orlando, Argentina, London. Oh my goodness, this is so exciting. Australia? What time is it in Australia right now? Fam? Fam and bam? Pass, it's the blue snowball mic. It's not in the... Oh gosh, got a little feedback here. Okay, so I think everything is good to go. So... Hi, 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 everyone saying hello. <laughs> so let's get into some editing before I pull up Premiere. Do you guys have any general questions about just camera gear or editing software? This is really for you. Um, let me make sure. You know, I had this idea of um, doing this and having like the pro proceeds and uh, the super chat thing to like all proceeds go to the Hurricane Harvey thing. But I couldn't figure out how to turn on super chat. Super chat is where you can donate to the streamers. I'll figure that out for the next one. Um, but yeah, it's about you guys. It's about editing. I see your questions already coming in. England is my city. <laughs> okay, good to go. All right, let's see. Questions, quite everyone's just saying where they where they're from. Do you guys want to learn to edit? <laughs> I love that y'all are repping from all over the place. All over the place. Okay. Have, this is a good question. Have you tried Clips, the Clips app uh, by iOS? So it is Apple's iPhone editing app. I have tried it, but I'm still craving a iPhone app where you can edit video. I think it's such an important tool. Um, I'm waiting, honestly, for the moment where I can just, I don't know, have my iPhone and just have like a display pop out and then I can just pull out a keyboard and edit with a heads up display, you know? That's what I'm waiting for. Okay, let's see. Do you mix audio at all? So because I produce a lot of videos and I, I spend a lot of time on them, but at the same time, it's just I do a lot every week. And so I don't really have time to spend a lot of effort on audio, but if I'm doing fancier things, I might do some compression or just make sure it's all leveled out. But the most I do in a normal edit is change the volume levels because you wanna make sure they are level. You don't want the music and you talking to be um, too loud. So that's actually a really good place to start, just kind of talking about audio and easy ways to manipulate the audio, just in terms of the levels. Um, so let's, let's do this. So I am going to, let's see if I can get this right. Here we go. Ah! <laughs> That wasn't the right button. Ooh, 
okay, are we good now? Cool. This is so exciting, me figuring out live streaming. Sometimes it's hard to um, do both. You know what I mean? All right, cool. So, the light is... Okay, so this is what my timeline looks like from the video. I've linked these videos down in the description below. So the first one that we're going to focus on is the Santa Barbara video. It's a four minute video. It's honestly one of my favorite edits that I have done in a while because I used to do a lot of just recap videos when I would go and travel and I would never really even talk in my videos. And so, oh yeah, you guys are asking Good questions, and I'm gonna get I'm gonna get to y'all's questions. But first, let's just focus on the audio. So um, I'm just gonna play. Let's just play this part real quick. We're going to Santa Barbara. So, okay, so that was pretty simple, but I just wanna teach you guys some just key shortcuts. Um, pro tip alert for audio. So, when this, this is the um, music, the green, and then the blue is the audio that's coming from my camera. So this is me talking. So normally the audio would just be like that. Um, but when you want to turn down things and you want to do it over time, all you have to do, uh, let me do this real quick. All you have to do is press the command button and then click on the audio and that forms one of these uh, keyframes. And then you press command, click on where you want the next one and then you can just adjust from there. So that's going to very smoothly turn down the audio I'll bring it down and that's just a super easy way to edit audio and stuff um, and so see right here I just kind of faded in me talking and all that all that's doing I'll just delete that is you have you can adjust you can turn it up by bringing it up turn it down by going down um, and you just press command click on it you get that point command click on you get that point and you can fade in so that's I mean I've told actually a lot of people that and um, that's new to a lot of people so hopefully that helps yay shortcuts okay so moving on to the next thing I'm gonna try to turn on mm, I'll have Keycaster on for the next stream. That's basically where you can see what buttons I'm pressing because that's helpful in terms of editing. So moving on from the volume adjustments and see, I'm always uh, like fading into things. So I'm always doing that. If you see, see like fade out. And here's another pro tip. So in between clips when you're talking, You'll notice a lot if you watch vlogs, people never do the fade transitions in between the two clips. Can you hear New York out there? The sirens are going. Um, people very rarely do this fade clip thing right here. And this helps with that sound that you, like you get it. Um, and that just smooths that over. Let me see if I can demonstrate. And I, I put a shortcut to where I press shift command D and it automatically puts a constant power fade and then I just shorten it and it you don't get any of those weird clip clip sounds I don't know really what to call that let's see if we can see you just kind of get that nice fade without it you just kind of get that weird popping sound like the little popping sound Y'all know what I mean? Um, also, I have my own shortcuts that are super helpful uh, in terms of, I did a whole video on keyboard shortcuts and how I use, and you can actually download my shortcuts for you to use. So I will put that in the description after. I'm gonna write these things down. So in the description, I'm gonna put snowball and then shortcuts. And then let's just talk about how I 
edit, edited this video. Um, so here's another pro tip how I organize my footage. So I do shoot a lot of slow-mo. How do you get slow-mo? Well, that's something that starts in your camera before you even get into your editing um, software. So this is a clip of just me talking. But it's a clip that I recorded in 24 frames per second, and this entire timeline is a 24 frames per second timeline. Now, if I wanted to slow this clip down, say I slowed it down to 50%, it would look, it would look not that great. It would be all, actually it doesn't look that bad. <laughs> but the point is you want to, oh, I messed that up. You want to shoot in a higher frame rate so you can go back and post and slow it down. So what the heck does that mean? I will explain what that means. So let's come over to my project window and I have all my footage. So I spent two days in Santa Barbara. I just put it in two folders, day one. Here's all my footage from day one and then day two. Extras, I just put random adjustment layers and sequences and then music is all in one folder. So I like to stay organized because if I want to come into this project after and grab something, I know what I'm, it's easier to navigate. And so, what I do is I organize based on frame rate in the beginning. And so any talking footage, any normal footage is gonna be recorded in 24 frames per second. Okay, here's a big question. Some people love to film and deliver their videos in 60 frames per second. That's okay. Um, me personally, I can't watch videos in 60 frames per second. It almost makes me sick because it's just, it captures, it's not the way you normally see motion. So 24 frames per second has a natural motion blur to it. It's the way we're used to seeing. Think of, when I say 60 frames per second or 24 frames per second, that means in one second of video, there's going to be 24 pictures that make up that one second of video. So when you record in 60 frames per second, you have more pictures, you have 60 pictures that form that one second of video. So you're gonna have more information and the motion is just gonna be more, see how I'm like moving my arms and there's motion blur? If you were, blah, 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 I can't talk. If you were recording this in a higher frame rate, 60 frames per second, you really wouldn't have any of that motion blur. So examples of when people deliver their content in higher frame rates when it makes sense is say it's National Geographic Channel and there's G uh, cheetahs going across the great safari and they're running. You want to see all of that crazy motion. That's when you would record in a higher frame rate, like 60 frames per second. Video games. A lot of the video game channels on YouTube will upload their videos in 60 frames per second because that is just the way video games are and you want to see everything that's happening in a video game. You don't want any lag at all, so it makes sense for that. I will tell you what it doesn't make any sense with is when you are just filming a normal vlog or freaking Jimmy Fallon, I think, or no, Jimmy Kimmel ups, uploads his videos in 60 frames per second. I don't get it. I know I got on a little rant, little miniature Sarah. My screen is so small. Um, but does that make sense? Uh, let me look at the comments real quick. I just wanna uh, make sure if that makes sense because a lot of people ask me about slow-mo. Um, and it depends if you are located over um, across the pond, you have the NTSC versus PAL system. So people in the UK will shoot in 25 frames per second instead of 24 frames per second. That's just technicalities. If you're in the US, just know that when you're shooting camera, normal camera stuff, you're talking to the camera, record in 24 frames per second. If you wanna slow it down at all, you can record in 30 frames per, this would be good to like note down if you're taking notes. If you wanna record in slow-mo at, slow, <laughs> slow at all, you record in 30 frames per second and then you can slow it down a little bit. So you would slow it down to 80% in Premiere. You just press Command R and you get this window that pops up. You can't see it for some reason. That's really weird. Um, press Command R, I'm still figuring out this live stream thing. I think I need to change my window thing. Press Command R and your clip and speed duration will pop up. And um, then it says speed is 
because you haven't manipulated it at all. So if you're recording 30 frames per second, you can slow it down to 80% and you'll still get the, it'll still look fantastic. If you want it even slower, you want to record in 60 frames per second and slow it down to 40% and you'll get nice, buttery, smooth, slow motion. And this is an example of um, a 60 frames per second slow motion. So I recorded all of this in 60 frames. It might be lagging since it's a live stream, but it's just really smooth. If you can tell. Yeah, and then if you want super slow-mo, if your camera can handle it, record in 120 frames per second, and then adjust the speed to 20%. So that means the clip is now 20%, it's like 20% slower or not 20% slower, it's just 20% of what it would have been if it was 100%. Slow-mo is kind of confusing. I hope that made sense. Um, but the way I organize things, this is gonna be super helpful if you are recording a lot of different frame rates, you wanna keep, keep it um, in order. What I do is I, I go to my project folder and I look at all my footage, I put it in list mode, and I organize it based on frame rate. So all of the 24 frames per second clips, I'm gonna leave labeled as the blue color. And then all of my clips, so these are 50, 60 frames per second. So the 60 frames per second, I'm going to right click. I'm going to right click and label them rows. This is very upsetting that you can't see any of the pop-up windows. I think I need to change something in my live stream. But, so you right click, you label it to a different color, and then I go to my 120 second frames per second um, clips, and I label it to orange. So what does that mean? Why do you do that? It is easier to view your footage in the thumbnail format, in this format, where you can see it, you can drag your mouse over it to preview, um, and this is just a way easier way to preview the video. So say I want to, let's see, take this clip. And I want, I'm gonna set my in and out point. So I want that clip to go into my project. So I'm gonna drag it, but once I drag it onto the timeline, I know from the moment I drag it on that it's slow-mo because look, it's pink. It's not blue, it's pink. So that means I can slow it down to 40% speed. Um, and so that's how I do slow-mo quick. And I do a lot of speed ramps. I think it adds to the excitement. So I'll go on, we will talk about this segment. <clears throat> First of all, are there any questions? Okay, people want a printable cheat sheet. Um, <laughs> to put up next to your computer. Maybe, oh my gosh, guys, that sounds like an ebook. I should go all Ty Lopez and say, right now, buy my slow mo editing ebook for $9.99. And it's funny, you can really tell who is not Peachy Fam in this live stream. We got some freaking randos saying terrible things. If you see some of that, I don't know if you can block them or hide them or give them a downvote. I don't know how that works, but you're not welcome here if you're gonna be negative, you know what I'm saying? But most of you guys are amazing and positive and helping each other out in the comments. It's amazing. So do you still like Sony? That is a fantastic question because I'm actually posting a video Monday talking about I'm selling a camera. But yes, I still like Sony. The majority of my cameras are Sony or Sony. So what is your decision process and workflow for what to record in 20, 24, 60, and 100? So I, I think I did kind of explain that. Um, let me enlarge this real quick. Okay, ready? Don't be scared, guys, but I just got bigger. Oh, no, but where'd Premiere go? There we go. Um, okay, so good question. Um, so a lot of you guys are wondering, how do I choose to record, like what do I record in slow-mo? Let me, um, so I mean, I think you kind of have a mental 
image like I love using slow-mo and so when I just want to make sure I always have a mix of maybe I'm driving in a car I want some establishment shots but it's bumpy in the road so a great time to use slow-mo is if you want those shots out of the car but it's super bumpy so using slow-mo is a way to smooth out that ride so a good example I think I have one yeah like right here let me shrink myself down okay so this is a good example of when to use slow-mo although I don't think I slow mo it here this ah here we go so it's just mountain footage but that's at 20% so that and I kind of speed ramped it up so I'll show you this clip real quick. So I like to do stuff like that where it's like super fast and then when it goes to slow-mo it's even a more dramatic effect. And so basically what I did with this, I wish you guys could see it, um, but if, I, if you press Command R for the clip speed duration, um, so I made this clip to 300%, if you can see that tiny. And then I made the next clip 20%. So it speeds up and then it slows down. And I honestly couldn't use that clip for a, long, for a while because we were in the car and it was bumpy and shaky. Um, but because it was 120 frames per second, I was able to slow it down and like, you know, show a little bit of the establishment shot. So a lot of times when I like to use slow-mo and it's very typical to use the slow motion is when you have a lot of motion going on. So here is an example. Ah, oh, my poor computer is doing so many things right now. Let me try to... <laughs> so I'm using my new MacBook Pro. Has a lot of power but there's a lot of different video things going on, so let's try. So that's obviously slow-mo. And then I speed ramped it, speed ramped it. So that's super, it's basically when there's motion you know, the water was flying up, I was doing crazy stuff. That's a good example of when to use slow motion because that's fun. I mean, when, I, when you're jumping into water, when you're doing something crazy where you want to see that motion, um, it's a really cool way to add excitement into your videos. I'm biased. I have always used slow-mo. Um, okay, here's a good question. I know we're talking about slow-mo a lot, but... It's a question I get a lot. So Mel, Mel Mel asks, Sarah, when should you not use slow motion? Fantastic question. Um, so you should not lose, you should not use <laughs> slow. It's interesting when you do live streams because you can't have cuts. This is the raw and real Sarah. Can she really talk? Who knows? Don't use slow motion when in like boring things if you're just walking down the street and you do slow motion of a pothole and then you lead that up with slow motion of just more subjects that aren't moving i think here's a, a good pro tip slow motion is super exciting when there's a lot going on when there's a lot moving so a example of that which is actually what i do a lot is, let's see if there's an example in this video. I don't know if there's an example, but what I do a lot is I'll shoot in slow-mo. So I'll shoot in 60 or 120 frames per second and I'll be shooting something moving. But as I'm shooting, maybe people walking or someone doing something exciting, I will also move the camera steadily and I will zoom in. So, um, when using the RX100 cameras, 
you can zoom just using this. And so like as I'm shooting slow-mo and as I'm moving, I'm also going to be like zooming in, which I think you'll notice in a lot of my vlogs. And then if I don't do that in camera, I'll actually come in and do it in like via Premiere. So I'll show you how to zoom in to a video over time. If you learn how to use keyframes, you can do literally anything in Premiere. So I'll show you how to do that. Does that make sense? <laughs> Pothole slow-mo was going to be my next feature film. I am so sorry that I did that. Okay, so you guys are saying block someone. Is someone just being a troll? <laughs> but she should. Okay, I'll just wait until he says. Sorry, John just texted me. He's coming in town. Um, let me just text him back real quick and we'll wait maybe for the troll to say something. Ignore, don't dab on the haters. Ignore the haters, am I right? Are you on the way? I'm excited for John to be in New York. Very exciting. Oh, speaking of John, he just commented. <laughs> I just texted you back, boo. Okay, so... Honestly, guys, if there's a troll, just ignore. This is how to, okay, I'm gonna explain keyframes, so strap in. If you know keyframes, you know how to do anything. So I think I actually did it in this clip. Let's look, so you go to effects controls. So I didn't, but I'm actually seeing this clip. Okay, let's do it on this one. So this is just a very slow-mo clip of the palm trees. Couldn't find the words for palm trees. So usually what I do to make slow motion clips or just normal clips, usually slow motion because this is a smooth way to do it to make it more exciting. I will gradually zoom into the clip as it's doing slow-mo. It just makes it more exciting, you know? So what you do, is you make sure your playhead is at the start of the clip and you keyframe, so it says toggle animation, you click that and that's gonna add this keyframe up here. So do you see that, that little dot? And you can move it and moving it up here, this thing up here is the same timeline as the length of this clip. So I wanna put this keyframe to the very left so that means it's gonna start at a 100 scale. So that means it's just gonna start normal. And then over time, I want it to zoom in to like that much, you say. So when I do that, that's gonna add another keyframe right here. So it says, okay, it's starting at 100% and now look at what it does over here. It gradually now zooms in. And so since I want this to happen over the entire period of the clip, I'm gonna grab this keyframe and just drag all the way to the right. So now we have it zooming in and that adds like a really cool effect. So let me do it a super dramatic one so you'll be able to tell. Um, and this is, these arrows right here are also a very good way to navigate in between keyframes. And so I'm at this first keyframe, I wanna automatically skip to the next one, I'm just gonna press that. And I'm gonna say, let's zoom in to like 184. I mean, that's gonna be ridiculous, but see, it zooms in super quick. So that doesn't look cool, but hopefully you get the point. And once you understand how to use keyframes, you can literally do any, anything. So the point of keyframes is just to change one of these attributes over time. So when you can add keyframes physically to audio down here, you can take the volume to from negative 3.07 and then add another keyframe down here and you can bring it all the way down to negative 42. If you want to change the position of this clip over time, if you wanted it like over here for some reason, you can add keyframes and adjust it at what time you want it. So now this clip moves like that. 
So you can, I mean, you can do this with anything. You can do it with opacity. So what I have set here is if I click on this clip and I press Command, like I'm adding the keyframes down here, this actually controls opacity. So it's a really easy way to fade in and out of your clips. So if I do that, it's gonna gradually fade out like that. So there's a lot of things you can do with keyframes. You can also like rotate, rot rotate, <laughs> rotate it um, over a certain amount of time. But yeah, there's a lot of things that you can do. Questions, comments, concerns. Oh my gosh, John, you don't have my address. <laughs> My boyfriend is literally communicating through the YouTube live comments. So I need to send him my address so he knows where I live. <laughs> Hold on guys. Um, New York, New York. Sorry about that. What up, girl? Get on Final Cut. Oh, he's the guy that's saying zoom into your tits. Okay, so we will block him. I found him, guys, so I blocked him. It's a shame. People are so lame. Proud to have most of you guys, the cool peachy fam. Okay, questions, comments, concerns. I blocked him, guys. I blocked him. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Okay. Um, is there any way? I don't know if there's a way to block words in my chat. Honestly, honestly, um, Every time I live stream, oh wow, now I'm very blown out. Um, every time I live stream, I learn something new. And so these are learning processes with you. But what I like about live streams is it's an actual conversation with you. So you guys can um, ask me your editing questions and hopefully I can get to some of you. I mean, maybe one day I'll have a more organized way of doing this to where maybe you can sign up to a more select group. Let me know if that seems fun to where maybe it's just maybe 10 of you in a live stream. I don't really know how to, I don't know if I can do that on YouTube, but I think there's a lot of room for me to teach what I've been doing since sixth grade. <laughs> I love video editing, I love capturing video. So yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, let's see, questions. Do you have a certain editing structure for vlogs that you use to guide yourself when editing them? Um, so usually it's um, the most helpful when you have an idea what your video is before. So you kind of think, what is the center of the video? But that wasn't the case for this video. This one was just a hodgepodge of stuff and I was actually going to make like two different videos, but it was more of a vacation. And so I discovered, hmm, I don't actually have a lot of footage from this. So it just became a big montage type thing, but it still told a story. Here's a, another pro tip, what I like to do. If you watch any of my other travel videos, you guys can go creep on my channel for more. What I do usually is the, no matter how many days that the video spans in between, I think I pulled clips from two or three days for this video. It always goes from the start of the day to the end. So you'll see going out in daylight or like maybe in the morning and then it's afternoon and then the sun is setting. So you'll see that transition, you'll see the sun setting and then it's the night footage. So very rarely will it be like night footage, eating lunch, eating breakfast, 
having dinner like because that doesn't really make sense to the viewer so you want to make sure that you're telling somewhat of a cohesive story and that the one element that I always keep consistent is kind of the time frame I just go from the start of the day to the end of the day no matter how many actual days of footage I have does that make sense that was a good question the gold question dun, 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 dun. I have Skater Boy stuck in my head. Says he was a skater boy. Okay, let's see. What are you guys chatting about? How do you pronounce your last name? Can anyone help that person pronounce my last name? <laughs> it is Saradici rhymes with Peachy. Um, the editing program is Adobe Premiere CC. Do you do critiques of newbies videos? I don't know, you guys have given me a lot of good ideas during this stream. Uh, this stream, would you guys want me to do critiques of your video? That's kind of weird, that's kind of a harsh word, but maybe you could send me videos and I could just get feedback. I'll do feedbacks maybe. <laughs> How do you zoom in tight and wide without the audio changing? The audio, that shouldn't affect the audio at all because all you're doing, here's a clip with the audio. All you're doing is you're changing the keyframes up here of the scale, so it doesn't affect the audio. <laughs> Everyone's like, rhymes with peachy. Footage organization, please. I did briefly cover that in the beginning, but if you can see, it's just day one, day two, and then I actually go through my clips in the thumbnail format so this is super helpful for me to keep it like this because it's just easier to see and you can enlarge them to make them bigger like that but the most important thing that i do is i make sure to organize by frame rates before so all of my 60 frame rates are pink all of my 120 frames um clips are orange so that way when i drag them onto the timeline i can tell what is slow-mo So yeah, let's see. I'm gonna take a few more questions and then I think John is should be arriving so I should probably clean up the apartment a little bit. <laughs> I'm the worst, I'm like texting. I shouldn't be texting right now. Few more questions, few more questions. Canon or Sony? Sony. Start, start all over, I missed everything. This video will be uploaded after. It probably wasn't the best structured video. I do wanna make these as structured as possible, but to where I can answer your questions. And I think that comes with, the more I do this, the easier it'll get. What are your thoughts on optical flow? That's just another slow-mo option. I always thought the optical flow option just looks kind of tacky. Um, let's see. How do you decide what footage makes the vlog? If it adds to the story, it's gonna make it in the vlog. I have cut really cool stuff, but it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense to the video I'm making and so I will I mean you you guys have not seen so much footage <laughs> um, just because it doesn't make sense with things so that's an important lesson Le listen lesson don't get really attached to footage just because you shot it doesn't mean you have to use it quote me on that that's a good quote Please make more live streams. Okay. Do you use all auto settings for focus, ISO, etc., on your RX100? Yes, I do. Let me, I'm just gonna make my face a little bit bigger as I'm answering y'all's questions. So the Sony RX100 is this guy. 
it is my main vlogging camera. And so usually when I'm using the RX100, I want it to be as convenient as possible. And so I literally use all auto settings on here. The only things that I will change, um, why is this not turning on? Hold on, let me put a battery in this so I can. The only things I will change is sometimes it doesn't expose right. So, quick pro tip is you can press down. Whoops. Or <laughs> maybe not. Oh, we'll do it like this. You can press the down button and that's going to bring up the exposure meter and you can take it to the right if you want it brighter. You can take it to the left if you want it darker. And that's going to help you when you're shooting all in auto to brighten things or darken things without messing up your auto settings. Where do you get your music? From SoundCloud people. Um, getting music for YouTube videos is terrible. It's like a terrible process. Maybe one day we can go more into that. I heard epidemic music is good. Um, let's see. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so the last thing that I see some people asking about, and then we will end this live stream, is what did I use? Let me turn this light back on. Um, what did I use to color this? So I actually use, I, I use Magic Bullet film in the past. I've used, oh, what else have I used? Oh, I've used the Lumetri color panel that you can just go into Premiere and search Lumetri. My lights in the way, the Lumetri color panel right there. Um, but I recently bought Film Convert. Convert? Yeah, Film Convert Pro. And so it's basically something that you just drag onto a clip. And this clip is a good example of something that looks super filmy. I just like the film look. And hopefully, don't go and buy preset things too quickly because I might be working on something for you guys. Teehee in order to achieve some of the looks that I've done over the past forevers. Um, but yeah, so on this clip, so I edit, basically how I apply color is I apply it to an adjustment layer above that clip. And so it allows you, oh, you can't see because my face is too big. Should have should have told me, guys, get your big old face out of here. Right, let me make it smaller. Okay, so this this right here is called an adjustment layer. How you get an adjustment layer is you just go to new um, and adjustment layer somewhere. Yeah, new adjustment layer, but you gotta have this highlighted. So new adjustment layer, and then you drag it over and you apply whatever effect you want to add onto that adjustment layer. So the effect was Film Convert Pro. And so as you can tell, it kind of gives me, I had a Lumetri. So this is the film, I look goofy there. I look awesome there. <laughs> so this is without any color grading at all. So no color grading at all. This was actually shot with my Sony a7R II with a 35 millimeter F2 lens. It's a beautiful lens. And this is with Film Convert and then Lumetri Color just to add some contrast. Um, so Film Convert is a way to just make your stuff look filmy and cool. So this was the Polaroid 600, 35 mm and I just, I tweak things a lot. Um, but the reason why to use adjustment layers is you can add this one effect to all of these clips underneath. So any, any effect you add to this adjustment layer is going to be applied to every single clip below it. So there's a lot of stuff that you guys can do. I'm gonna do an entire video on how I've color graded things very soon because I might be working on something for you guys. 
Maybe some presets. Maybe some presets. So yeah. All right. <laughs> People are like, yes, LUT packs. I might be making some LUTs for you. Um, and if you don't know what LUT means, it is lookup table. Um, lookup tables. Because with all of these applications that I've used, it's only been a little, it's been like a piece. They've been tools, but I always add things to it. It's like a, a conglomerate of things that I do to color grade. Um, so with LUTs and lookup tables, it's a look that's like my look. And it'll be able to give my look to you with one button, which is gonna be super cool. LUTs for days. Someone, Scott, why do you want me to bring back the spectacle so bad? Would it make you happy if I put on spectacles for you? Because you have been commenting that so much. I just, I don't understand. I don't. You, you want me to... Okay, Scott, I hope this is gonna make, make you happy. Oh, they don't even work because they're not charged. Well, that was depressing. Well, Scott, there you go. Here's my spectacles. I don't Snapchat anymore. I'm all about the Instagram stories. Follow me on Instagram. So yeah. Okay, homies, my, <laughs> yes, my fellow creators, keep hustling out there. Um, I might, I'll probably have a new podcast tonight, I'm trying to do those on the daily, the daily peach. You can follow me on Anchor. The link is in the description below. I will add all of those things that I said I would add in the description below, like the snowball mic that I've been using. My, my throat hurts from talking for so long. Um, and then my shortcuts video, because a lot of you guys were asking about shortcuts. So yeah, and yes, the, the Lutz things is with Sawyer Hartman, which I'm very excited about. Are you guys excited? Speak with a Texas accent. Is that Texas enough for you, y'all? Anyways, okay. This was real. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for hanging out. Um, oh, oh, and if you're still here, how about you just throw me a like? Can you just throw me a like button? really quick that would be fantastic so it it'll get served up in the algorithm i think am i doing youtube right am i youtubing right guys anyways thanks for tuning in i should probably be a good girlfriend and see if john can get home safely from the airport <laughs> love you guys you're awesome thanks so much stay peachy okay bye